Hello, guys. Let's talk about oxyanions. So an oxyanion is a negatively charged ion that contains one or more oxygen atoms bonded to another element. All right, so I have here a cutout of the periodic table. This is from period two. This is from period three. And I am interested in carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. So all these elements are going to have oxyanions. And there is a pattern based on which you can learn how to name them, uh, what is their charge, so you don't have to memorize that much. Okay, so first of all, in the second period, we can have a maximum of three oxygen atoms bonded to those elements. In period three, we can have a maximum of four oxygen atoms bonded to those elements. All right. In addition, the charge increases as we go right to left. So charge increases, it goes up. Okay, so this means that if I have an oxyanion with, let's say, nitrogen atoms, okay, it can have a maximum of three oxygen atoms. So that means that I cannot have more than NO3. Okay, and the charge as it increases as I go left to right, and since nitrogen is the first uh, in this period, I'm going to have a minus one charge. And the name of this oxyanion is going to be the nitrate ion. Okay, so I'm going to call it nitrate. All right. What about carbon? So when carbon makes an oxyanion, it can also have a maximum of three oxygen atoms. So I can write out the formula, CO3. What about the charge? Well, the charge should increase. So if I had one minus in CO3, I need to have two minus. So one more negative charge. And I'm going to call this the carbonate ion. So carbonate. Now, do you see the pattern that I have eight ending here and eight ending also here? Okay, let's move on and let's look at chlorine, for example. So in this case, I can have a maximum of four oxygen atoms. So this can be ClO4. And this is the first in my period as I go right to left. So it is going to have a charge of one minus. This ion is actually called the perchlorate ion. You can see that there is an ending which is eight again. I just ate a bunch of oxygens. Okay, just kidding. All right, let's move on. What's up with sulfur? Well, I'm again going to have SO4, right, because of the maximum of four oxygen atoms, and I have to increase the charge, so it's going to be two minus. And this is going to be called the sulfate ion, okay, sulfate, sulfate ion. Again, I ended with eight, right? And the last one in our period is phosphorus. So again, the maximum of four oxygen atoms, which is PO4. Now I have to increase the charge again. So it's going to be three minus, and this is called 
the phosphate ion. Okay. Phosphate ion. Again, I have an ending of eight. Now, there is a little bit of difference here because in perchlorate, I actually not only have a suffix, but a prefix given to it. So actually, the ion, which has one less oxygen in case of chlorine, so ClO3, and I'm going to keep the charge, so minus one is going to be called the chlorate ion. So basically the prefix and the suffix tells me a lot of information about how many oxygen atoms do I have. Okay, now what happens if I go one oxygen atom less? So for example, let's say, so let's do NO3 and let's take away an oxygen atom. So that's gonna give me NO2. I'm going to give the minus one charge. So this is going to be the nitrite ion. So I ended it with an ite. Okay, what happens if I do the same, let's say with the sulfate ion. So I take away an oxygen atom. So SO4 was my starting point. Now I have SO3. This is going to be the sulfite ion. Okay, sulfite ion. You see that I have an ending of ite. Now I can do the same thing with every single uh, oxygen ion. And there is a pattern. So we have eight and eight. And that's the most important suffix that you have to remember. Now, there is a little bit more to it. So let me go to the next slide. And we have a huge pattern here. So let's first look at this part of the table. Okay. And remember, we started with the perchlorate ion, right? where we have a prefix which is pair and the eight is the suffix now if i have one less oxygen atom so clo3 minus i have an eight ion so this is chlorate if i take away another oxygen atom so clo2 one minus is going to be the chloride ion and if I take away one more oxygen atom, ClO minus, I'm going to have the hypochlorite ion. So you have the eight and the eight. If you have more than eight, you have to add the pair to show that. And if you have less than the eight, then you have to add the hypo. And if you have no oxygen, then you use the ide as we learned before. I hope this makes sense. So acids are named very similarly in a so acids are named in a similar pattern. Okay. So if we go with our eight ion, right, that has the eight ending. Then I'm going to have an acid that ends with ic. Ic acid. Let me give you another example. So I had the sulfate ion, SO42 minus ion, and the acid is H2SO4 connected to it. So this was the sulfate ion. And H2SO4 is going to be sulfuric acid. So the 8 ion has an ic acid. Okay, what happens if we go to the 8 ion, which has one less oxygen? In that case, we have to use O's as our 
suffix. So with chloride ion, I'm going to end up with chlorous acid. And if I have, let's say, SO32 minus, which is the sulfite ion, let me write it out, sulfite ion, then my acid, the H2SO3 acid, is going to be the sulfurous acid. So, O's acid. Okay. So, if I go lower with the number of oxygen atoms and I get to the hypoite ions, then I'm going to have a hypo OUS acid, so hypochlorous acid for hypochlorite ion. And if I don't have an oxygen atom, then I'm going to have a hydro prefix and then ic suffix. So in case of the chloride ion, I'm going to have the hydrochloric acid. If I would have the sulfide ion, which is the S2 minus ion, the H2S acid would be called hydrosulfuric acid. Okay, I really hope that this pattern and this table makes sense. Uh, when I was learning naming patterns, this helped me a lot. So I hope this is going to help you too. Have a wonderful day and see you in the next video.